So you're wondering on either self-publishing or traditional, which road to take? Well, which one's harder? What does query letter and ISBN number mean? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Lizzie Murphy, and today I'm here to tell you all the differences between self and traditional. Many new writers may hear one thing about self and start to do things for that path, and then hear things for traditional, and then switch to that. Maybe not knowing the drastic differences between the two. Okay, first things first. What does traditional mean? It means that once you've written your book and you've edited it. Now you do a lot of research to find an agent for you to query. I'll get into a query letter in a minute. Once you have a list of agents that you want to query, now you write your query letter. I won't go into too much detail about this because this is a podcast and/or a YouTube video in itself. But you have to write a letter to this specific. Person, try to hook them with a very short paragraph about your book. Give them the word count, genre, all that, and then you write about two to three paragraph blurb of your book without giving anything away, like the villain, the ending, no spoilers. Then you write a paragraph about yourself. If you have any awards, or if you've met the agent at some conference, or you like some of the books that the agent has worked with other people in the past, then you can put that there. You write a very neat thank you for your time. Put your email, a phone number at the bottom below that. Then you cringe the second you click send, and then you pray. I guess I went into a, a lot of detail about that, huh? Well, then you go through rejection letters, agents requesting full manuscripts, then them possibly saying that your book is not for them. Now I know it seems like I'm doubting traditional, but I'm not. I did consider that in the beginning, but I did now switch to self, which brings me to my next thing. I'm even talking about self. So once you write your book and you edit it, you can either send it off to an editor for a huge amount of money, or if you have a family member who is or was a teacher or is an editor, I would say that you can send it send your book to one of them, and that works perfectly fine, and you don't have to spend any money. I know I'm probably gonna get some comments about that remark. <laughs> so once your book is edited, you need to worry about formatting your book. Now, if you all want, I can do a video on how I did my book Keeper Safe. Let me know, and I'll do a video. Once your book is edited and formatted, you need to worry about your ISBN number. When I first started doing self-publishing, I had no idea what that meant. Basically, an ISBN number is a way for people to sell to sell your book, say at a bookstore at or at your library. It's a way for the computer to scan your book and then the computer to know that that is yours. Now you can buy one from say Ingram Spark for I think forty dollars. Or you can use KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing, or you can do Lulu. dot com, and they will provide one for you. If you all want me to talk about the differences between Lulu and KDP, let me know, and I'll film a video and do a podcast on that one as well. 
Now, for a traditional, your publishing house will supply the ISBN number for you, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So that's nice. Now you need to think about the cover. <laughs> now, it can cost a pretty penny to pay for someone to make a cover. But plenty of self-published authors have made their own book cover. Uh, go check out my book, Keeper Safe, on my website, and you'll see mine. Okay, once your book is edited, formatted, and you've got the cover, and you've got the ISBN number, now you need to worry about beta readers. Beta readers are people you give your book to for free, and they read it and give feedback to you, and you look it over and possibly use their feedback and put those ideas in your book. Now, you don't have to put all of their ideas in your book. You can do some, you can do a lot, you, you can do all of them, it's totally up to you. You wrote the book, you decide where the book needs to go. If you feel like this one person's idea doesn't really match up to what your vision is for your book or your book series, then you don't need to do it. Totally up to you. Then on the marketing. You market your book on all of your social media sites, whether that's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, or all four. And you can also have people who are a part of your street team. I won't go into too much detail about that, but it's where a bunch of people just band together and they help you create awareness for your book, talk about it on their social media accounts, let you do a guest blog post talking about your book, share your posts about your book on their social media accounts, etc., etc. It's a really nice way and and it's just you know, amazing that people will just come together and help you create awareness for your book. It is pretty amazing. I have 10 people, if I'm correct, who are willing to be on my street team, which is pretty amazing. If you all clicked yes on my Instagram story from a while back, then I will definitely be contacting you when I'm ready to do a street team for Keeper Safe. Well, that's it for my first podcast, guys. Uh, if you all want me to do any specific podcasts, let me know. I'd love some ideas. Thank you all so much for li- for listening. I post new podcast episodes every Friday and new YouTube videos every Saturday. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and my website is lizzymurphy.com. And please r- review my podcast, share it on your social media, all that good stuff, and I'll touch you all again soon. Bye, everybody.